Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. And today is the first day of Adobe Max 2017. And well, lo and behold, the new updates to After Effects and Premiere and Photoshop and all the things that are updated are out and ready to download. So let's talk about path points and dive more into the expression language and how to use the new path point access. Mikey's production tips is brought to you by Cinema Spice. After Effects tools, video overlays and backgrounds, and sound effects. To update, just go to your Creative Cloud application. It may not show up right away. You might have to refresh it and look for uh, new available uploads or downloads. But before you do, make sure that you look at this, these additional settings where you can uncheck the box to remove your old application. You don't want to do that, especially if you are doing um, video editing or motion design for any sort of um, you know, business where you make money and you're in the middle of a project especially. Keep your old um, applications because you never know if these new ones are going to work properly with what you're doing. So never delete the old ones unless you haven't used them for years. Um, I usually have you know, six or seven versions of After Effects on my computer, so um, that's just me. Now let's get into the path point access. I did a quick uh, tutorial about some of the stuff you can do with this before, but what I want to do with this is dive into how the expression language works and how to access the path points through expressions. Now, if you're not really into expressions and don't care to learn, um, well, After Effects, the After Effects team has created this create nulls from paths script. Um, so if you just go to Windows and create nulls from paths script in as part of when you, you know, one of your windows, you can open that up and you can just dock it there. And it will do all the same things that I'm going to show you how to do um, with expressions, um, but it'll do it automatically for you. But sometimes you need to know how the expression language works. All right, so let's hide everything. Uh, well, we've got the shape layer here. So here is one of our paths. And what we want to do first is have our nulls follow this point. So that if we want to attach things to this, you know, joints or something like that, we can do that. So how we do that is let's grab a new null object. So remember this null object, we want this to follow these points so that it sticks to it. So we need to add the expression to the null object, not to the path. So we want to add that to the position. So I hit P on the keyboard and let's, um, then you hit option or alt on the, and you click on the stopwatch and it opens up your expression dialog box. First thing we want to do is bring in this path and then bring in the layer as variables because we're going to use both of that in order to create this. So give it a name. I'm going to call this one T path just because. And then equals, then pick whip the path, end with a semicolon. And then T layer equals, and then grab that shape layer and end with a semicolon. Now what we need to do after this is use an expression called to comp. And the reason why we do that is because the XY data of this shape layer versus the actual comp versus the null is all going to be messed up um, because everything's not zeroed out properly. And you really can't uh, do that with a, a path anyways. It just, it is where it is. Um, but with the to comp expression, you're able to make everything work magically is what it does. So how to do that is you need to declare the layer first. So T layer, then you type dot to comp with a capital C. And then inside the parentheses, we are going to put our points. And how the points work is there's one, two, three, four points in this. And with expressions, lots of the times, uh, numbers count start at zero. So it's actually 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So now inside the parentheses, we're going to declare our path, t path, and then add to this the expression dot points. And then two parentheses open and close. And in here is where you can add like a time if you want to get the points at a certain time, you can do that. But if you leave it blank, it'll just take the points from whenever. And then in square brackets after that, we want to add, okay, which point do we want to attach it to? Point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 
Um, so let's do the first one, which is actually zero. So take a look at this. So we declare the layer dot two comp, and then in parentheses we declare the path dot points, open close parentheses, then square bracket with a zero in the middle. And hopefully this will work. And it did. So what we see there is that attached right to that point. Now what we can do is let's grab you know something else, a different shape layer. We can stick that right there on the end and then parent it to that null. Now when we come into this shape layer and move that path around, that path point, that automatically sticks to the end. It just follows it. So that's pretty darn cool. So that is nulls following points. Next thing I want to do is trace path. And this is where you can trace along this path and then have your null follow that and then attach it that way. So this would be like if you wanted, you know, like my example I did in my last video, an airplane following a path. So it's very similar to points uh, or nulls follow points in that you want to do the expression on the null itself instead of on the path. So let's go back into this null. Well, let's just create a new null. new null object, call this one trace, and in the position we're going to be doing the same thing. So first declare the path, you know I'm going to just copy it from the other ones, these two top lines, and then again tlayer.2comp, and in parentheses, what I want to show you is um, all of these expressions are a part of the new expression where you can go into the this library of expressions and you can, if you click on this little disclosure triangle you can see path property and then in here he, these are all the expressions that are associated with the paths and so I can come in and just kind of look at them you know points that's the one we already used and the one I wanted to do is point on path so if we click on that point on path and then you have percentage and time. You can actually come in here. We don't need time, so let's delete that. And you actually don't have to write out percentage either. You can just put in the percentage. And then before that, we need to put in, you know, T path dot. And you can see it attached it right to that path. And you, right here it's at 0.5, so the way this works is it goes from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 100. So if we wanted to add a slider to this, so let's add an expression control slider. And as this slider goes from 0 to 100, we want this to go from 0 to 100, but it's actually to 1. So we can connect this to the slider and then divide that by 100. And then as we slide across, it will go. Now what's something neat we can do with this is now let's go down to, let's go down to the shape layer path and let's add a trim paths. And if we were to take this trim paths and pick whip the end to that same slider, then we have this going on. And what we can do is, again, we can add something to that trace null object. Just by parenting it. So, as we slide, you can have something right on. So that is the trace path. And again, if you get kind of lost you can always go in, let me go to the position on this, and click on this disclosure arrow for all of the expressions, path properties, and then you can see what is there. So you can actually have you know, a time in there if you want to offset the time um, and not take it at the current time. Okay, the next one I want to do is creating a path that follows um, null objects. So instead of the null objects follow the points, I want to do just the opposite. 
So for this, I'm going to add a new path. It doesn't matter what it is. Let's make it a stroke and let's um, have no fill. <clears throat> and then on this path, let's add an expression. And I'm going to go in here to the path properties. And you see this create paths. And it has everything all laid out. And what it does, it's going to create four points in a square. And so let's take a look at this. It says create paths and in parentheses points equal um, the first point, And this is all in square brackets. The first point is 0, 0 then 100, 0, 100, 100, 0, 100. And so that just creates that square. So let's add a null object, just so we can see how to um, kind of affect this. So new null object. Now the thing about this null object is you can see its position is here, you know, 656, 439, but that 0, 0 is right there. So we need to subtract some, um, you know, the 960 by 540 because it's a 1080p. So let's bring up that position. And what I want to do here is in this first square bracket, I can just pick whip that position. And then let's minus 960 comma 540 square bracket. And then now when I move this around, it will follow it. And I could do that for each of these points. And if we want to add a point, we, what we do is just in this square bracket, we add a comma, and then let's add another point. So 450 by 50. And it's clear over there. Let's go by, go negative 450. So you see, I'm, I'm just adding another point in here. And now we have five points. So creating a path this way, it's a little bit tedious. There's lots of points you can stick in there. Having the, this script that goes in and automatically creates everything for you is really nice. But it's also nice to understand how all of this works. Now, if you want to put in uh, in tangents and out tangents, that's where if you have a curve and you've got the handles, um, you got to stick it in here and basically it needs to have the exact number of points. So if you have five points like I do here, I need to have five in tangents and five out tangents. I can't have just one of them have tangents. They all need to have tangents. And then is closed is true. If we come in here and say false, it will just make the path not closed. So that is the path point access some of the expression language. I know this is kind of a little bit of a boring one for a lot of people, but the people that are really into expressions, um, hopefully you appreciate having a little insight um, into how this works. And again, just go into the expression uh, dictionary here and go down to the path property and you can see all of the things you can do. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.